The subject of today's video will be a writer named Carl Ha Hi Hyacin Hi Hyacin I don't I don't know how to say it. Well, I'm not sure how well known he is. It's likely that you've heard of one of his books, Who. Carl, whatever, started off his career mostly writing books for adults. Today I'm going to talk about his four kids slash young adult books. Hoot, Flush, Scat, and Chomp. These four books are all worth reading, so if you want to read them, leave now because this review is full of spoilers. Let's just dive right in. His first book aimed for a younger audience was Hoot, a book that takes place in Florida. Our main character is Roy, and it feels a little odd to call him that. There is no real relation between Roy and the plot at large. The situation would have had a different outcome if he wasn't in it, but the only reason why he even got involved was because of curiosity or nosiness, depending on how you look at it. Roy, the new kid, gets caught up with a runaway boy nicknamed Mullet Fingers. His real name is Napoleon. You decide which name is dumber. And his sister Beatrice. Together they unravel and fight against an incident in a local construction site. Alright, alright, let me just walk you through this. Say that you're this hotshot executive at Mother Paula's Pancake House, a chain of restaurants with plenty of money, celebrity endorsement, and locations across the country. While you're preparing for construction of a new restaurant in southern Florida, you discover that living at the site are several burrowing owls, which being a species of special concern in Florida, would make building there very illegal. What do you do? If you said cut your losses and build somewhere else, you're apparently too smart to work at Mother Paula's. They decide to just hide the discovery of owls from the government and build there anyway. Are they just really that lazy? This Rick's not only a criminal offense, but also a massive PR nightmare if anybody found out. The other three books at least supply a reason why either the people were desperate enough to do something illegal or that they believed they wouldn't get in that much trouble if they got caught. That's not this case. The story of Hoot is actually a little contrived if you analyze it. However, even with that, I think that it is a good idea for a story, especially for a kid's book. This is an environmental message that has a good sense to be small. This kind of stuff does happen, and using it in the plot is a good way to show how normal people can make a difference. Sure, saving a few baby owls from being steamrolled isn't huge, but huge things can happen without small things happening before it. Hood is also well-written, funny, and has good characters. It might not be quite as good as some of his other books, but it's still very solid. His next book, Flush, is the most different in terms of structure and themes. The other three books are in third person, this one is in first person. The other three are mainly about friends, this one is about family. Flush is also the best of the four books. Flush is a book that takes place in Florida. It follows Noah, a kid whose father has been arrested for sinking a gambling boat called the Coral Queen. He sunk it because the owner, Dusty Muleman, has been dumping the stuff from its sewage tank into the ocean because he's just really lazy. I imagine that it's also kind of to save money, but I really think that one day he just woke up and said, I know I can easily get rid of the sewage the legal way, but that sounds hard. I'll just dump it into the ocean. Besides being gross, it is also very, very illegal. He also does have a bit more of an explanation than the Mother Paula thing did. He does have blackmail against the officials that would prosecute him if he got caught, so it makes a little bit more sense why he would do this. He also has somebody who will tell him about inspections and things of the sort coming beforehand. So, it's more of a plan than the one in Who. Now it is up to Noah, his little sister Abby, and a bartender on the ship named Shelly to nail Dusty Muleman and clear Noah's father's name. Another thing that makes Flush different is that it takes place in the Keys, which means that the ocean plays a lead part, whereas the other three are more about animals. One of the biggest themes in the book is that of family, and this is a very well-developed and interesting family. This is the best of the four books because it is told the best. It's awesome characters, great pacing, and a very, very clear plot. The plan that Noah, Abby, and Shelley come up with is to flush food dye down the toilets of the Coral Queen, making a colorful trail that would make it very obvious where the waste is coming from. And the way that those events are told is very engaging. Chapter 15 of Flush is one of my favorite chapters in any book. 
This is the book I recommend you read if you can only read one of these four. Next up is Scat, probably the weakest of the four. It's by no means bad, but it's just sort of missing something. Scat is a book that takes place in Florida. In it, Nick's biology teacher, Miss Starch, goes missing in a swamp during a field trip. You know how in cartoons there's often a really, really harsh teacher that everybody both hates and is afraid of? That's Mrs. Starch. Nonetheless, Nick and his friend Marta are still curious about what happened. Not to mention, one of the tough guys named Smoke suddenly had a personality change and is now a model student. And what does this have to do with a panther cub and illegal oil drilling in the Everglades? Scat is more of a mystery novel than anything else now that I think about it. This brings me to one of the aspects of Carl Hyacin's writing style. His style of writing is sort of detached, even when he's in first person. It reads like it was written by a reporter, and that makes sense because that's exactly what he is, a reporter. He also goes about the plot the way the reporter would, getting it from every angle and leaving no loose ends. Often this leads to characters being way behind the reader in info dumps. This is one of the reasons why Flush had a better format when it comes to telling a story like this, because it kept the reader with the characters. Anyway, back to Scat. This book has more development to the family of the main character than in Who, but not nearly as much as in Flush. Nick's father was in the military and in the middle of the book loses his right arm in combat. This leads to Nick tying his right arm behind him to become a lefty as well. If you can guess that this ends with being a lefty saving his skin later, congratulations, you done it! On the field trip where Mrs. Starch goes missing, there was a fire in the swamp, but as it turns out, it was a controlled burn lit to draw attention away from the illegal oil drilling operation in the swamp. There's also the story of a Florida panther cub who needs to get back to its mother. The thing that just sort of bogs down the story is that there is a lot going on, and the book isn't really long enough to give it proper time to develop everything. One of the things to take away from Scat is a book that is good, but is a little unfocused as well. Lastly is Chomp, which came out in 2012. I think at this point even Carl Hyacin himself noticed that he was falling into a niche, so to his credit he tries something completely different with this one. Chomp takes place in you know where by now, and follows Wahoo. Wahoo. God help a child named Wahoo. He works with his dad in a pet wrangling business for wildlife and shows with stuff. They got alligators and bobcats. It's awesome. But things get hairy when they start to work on a survival reality show, which, shock of shocks, is phony as hell! But, more importantly, the host, Derek Satire Badger, is cruel to animals and is also a total ass. Chomp brings into the limelight probably the biggest problem with these four books as a whole. The main characters in them. It's not that they're bad or even really boring, it's just that they're the exact same character. Just an average 10 to 12 year old boy who is pretty nice, smart, but a little impulsive. Impulsive but fine otherwise is a trope as common among male characters as clumsy but fine otherwise is for female characters. When I was playing the events from the books in my head, I imagined Roy, Noah, Nick, and Wahoo as the exact same kid. The most different from all of them is Wahoo, and that's mainly just because he's missing a thumb. Yeah, he was feeding Alice the alligator who bit off his right thumb and forced him to, to become a, a lefty. Wait, this is the second forced lefty in two books. Is, is, is there something Carl Hyacinth's trying to tell us? Anyway, there is also a girl named Tuna who just sort of pops into the story and tags along to the Everglades for the shoot. That's basically what happens. Tuna has nothing to do with the story to that point. I don't even think she's mentioned, and she's a main character. Yeah, Wahoo and Tuna are both fish. How whatever that's supposed to be. So Wahoo, Tuna, and Wahoo's dad go to shoot, and things go as predicted. Derek is a jerk to animals, and Wahoo's father is mad about it. Then Tuna's abusive father shows up to look for Tuna, and then everything just gets wrecked. One of the things in this book that's not really present in the others is an element of parody. Expedition Survival is one of those, it's just a biting satire of things like Man vs. Wild. One where the host doesn't even look the part. There's also at some point a satire of the Twilight series. Just, just thrown in there. 
I have to give a lot of credit to Hyacin. Chomp was something completely different, and it does really work. It's probably the second best of the four. So, in conclusion, I would say that these four books are all pretty good. Not as good as some of his adult books, namely Skinny Dip, but if you're under 14, I would recommend these, especially Flush and Chomp. I guess I'll see you later.